This is the most disturbing thing I have ever seen in my career and I desperately need your guys' help. I had a customer reach out and tell me that they have this old book of photos from World War II. It's been in their family for a while and they wanted me to try and sell it. I said, okay, not knowing what I was getting into. Now the book starts out, okay, the soldier is stationed in Southeast Asia probably around 1937, 1938, he goes over there and it starts out okay. So many incredible, well done photographs. This guy, not only was a great photographer, he had a great camera, but the pictures start to get more war related here. And then I got to this page and I cannot show you guys what's beyond this page. And I had no idea when I got that book on Monday and I opened it up and I got beyond that page, I screamed. Somehow that guy who took those photos was present for the rape of Nan King, and he took about 30 photographs that are unknown to history that are worse than anything I've seen on the internet in color. And those photos are in black and white. If you guys don't know about the rape of Nan King, this is the script for it. I'm gonna film a TikTok explaining what it is probably tomorrow. In short, it's one of the worst human atrocities of all time, one of the worst acts of World War II, one of the worst things to ever happen in human history. But the simple fact is, a museum needs to take that. Even though those photographs are horrible, if it was up to me, I'd make viewing those photos mandatory for everyone on Earth. History is doomed to repeat itself, and the only way that we can do that is if we learn from our mistakes by preserving the past and studying it and talking about it. So please help me, you guys, so that I can get this to the proper place where it can be preserved forever. A St. Louis Park collectibles dealer is getting international attention because a customer sent him a book to sell. The owner of St. Louis Park Gold and Silver did not expect what he had in possession would become an international phenomenon. Kale says he sees quite a bit of historical paraphernalia. So when a customer reached out about sending an old photo album he wanted Kale to sell, he says he didn't think much of it until Monday when it arrived. Oh yeah, it's that book. And I start looking through and you know, maybe about 10, 15 pages in is where it gets really disturbing and I just oh god there's only just a few pages but the pages there are really 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 bad I had somebody look at it yesterday and what they thought was it is authentic it is violence in Shanghai not Nanking so the story is, as far as I understand from this person his father acquired it as payment from a contracting job so the person I think who took the photos what that already is insane yeah it's very weird uh, the person who took the photos died and left it to his wife and his wife didn't want it and hired this guy and, and somehow knew this guy liked Militaria and this person was also a service person. Uh, said, look, I, I can't pay you, but I got this book. I don't want it. It's really disturbing. Do you want it? So she gave it to him and he kept it for years and he recently died and left it to his son and his son reached out to me. So when they're, when they reach out to you and say, do you want to buy this book? You're not flipping through it ahead of time? Before he, he, you... I guess I should have just said, do you have pictures of what you're talking about? I just said, oh, book, photos, kind of disturbing. Okay. So when did the book arrive? Got here on Monday. So and I was actually standing- This past Monday? Just on Monday, yeah. And I forgot, I said yes, because I like, oh, sign for this. Okay, what's this? So I had a family friend over here mm -hmm. and uh, I opened it with him and I go, Oh, well, yeah, this guy said he was sending me a book. And I, you know, so I opened the first page, it's like, holy shit, these photos are really good. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, they're just well done. When you see photos from World War II, they're blurry, they're shaky, there's not a lot of depth, they, you know, it's, it's just not good quality. Mm -hmm. But this was something else. So, but then you go a couple pages in, and suddenly you just, there's all these disturbing photos. So I'm standing there with a family friend, and I flip the page not knowing, and he just goes, what? And I'm just like, oh my god. So we slowly go through this. I couldn't even finish going through the book. I just, I closed and I put it in the back. And I had, I went home on Monday and I just was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I don't know what I can do with this. I almost mailed it right back to him. But I decided I'll put it in the back and I'll think about it. And I had trouble sleeping Monday night. I had trouble sleeping Tuesday night. I kept thinking about it. And Wednesday I just was like, well, I gotta make a video. I gotta do something. I can't just sit on this. So I, I was like, okay, well, how do I make a video? Cause in every video, they're very stylistic and it's a lot of shouting and fun and yeah! And oh, I can't do that for this. I can't even put music on it. Yeah. So I, you know, I made the video that's gone so viral and I put it out, uh, like as I was leaving, I put it out like 7 p.m. Went out with friends, uh, three in the, three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what if that video got any hits? And then I looked and I just was like, oh my God. And even if it turns out the whole book is fake, which I don't think so, but even if it turns out it's just a book of reproductions, it started a conversation and I think that's a good thing. Yeah, reproductions, what would that mean? That would mean that whoever put this book together had access to the originals. Uh, so, so what Rolling Stone told me was that apparently sailors 
would purchase these photos to fill in their book because a lot of sailors got issued these books. They're, you know, blank book. Take some pictures. Okay. Uh, so potentially these are uh, copies of other photos that he acquired and put them in there. But the whole book itself, there's hundreds and hundreds of photos and they're real. They've got to be, I would think it, at least at least 90% of it is real. So, and part of why I made that video is I have attempted, I have gotten items that are of historical importance, not like this, but then I've attempted to contact museums and they don't, they don't get back to me. They just, psh, and it's happened enough times where it's like, well, if I just made a video that blew up, like then I could actually get somebody who knows what they're doing to help me with this. Cause this is kind of outside my league and I don't even know how to go about uh, getting a museum to acquire this. I've never done this before. Mm -hmm. uh, again, though, I just, I wasn't counting on uh, being number one on Chinese social media for a day. I mean, all I can say is I, this would be a really dumb hoax because I am asking for so many problems to happen if I was making this up, so. This is enormously difficult for me on so many levels. It's so trick. I mean, it's a very tricky situation I'm navigating. It's emotionally very powerful. It's, this is like, just fucked me up a lot on so many levels. I'm either a hero or I'm hated. It's, it's, it, I don't, I'm not reading these comments because it's nothing good comes from reading comments ever. It's one thing I learned a long time ago. Thank God, thank God I'm well versed in social media and having a big audience and having uh, controversy and just lots of eyes on you and lots of criticism on you. And it doesn't bother me, but like this is, yeah, I'm a little outside my element here. I, I don't regret posting the video. I do regret some of the language that I use. Uh, again, I, I probably should have not used the words that this is the rape of Nanking in this book. I, I regret using those words because there's, you know, I, I gave people false hope too that there were some photos out there. That's, you know, that was wrong of me. So I'm working on distributing it to a Chinese museum because uh, I do know that that is where it needs to go. Just because it appears to be Shanghai, not Nanking, I don't think the Nanking Museum is necessarily appropriate Chinese Museum will get the physical book hey I'm a, a gun carrying American so I usually have a gun on me that said uh, I don't usually have the bulletproof vest on me too yeah you know cuz I don't I don't know if, if I'm being followed I don't know if somebody's camping outside my apartment there's a lot of crazy people yeah I just I, this is just a lot I've been getting death threats the outpouring has been incredible um, I I myself was moved to tears a few times uh, talking to people and I feel like I've had people stopping by giving me flowers it's been really powerful and just the fact that people have said no matter what thank you for the education the message is important even this whole book turns out to be fake we still think you did a good thing and I can't forget that and I, I just for myself I need to remember that too all right, it's not here it's not here this one is gold filled with sterling. Oh, yeah, this one's not very expensive. Just a couple bucks. Okay. Yeah, these are so these are costume items. These are not expensive. Oh, uh, I gave you ten bucks. Oh. Uh, you know what? Can I make a record? I have a car loaded last I can send you a uh, I, I can't. I can't. Oh, yeah, big right? Oh, oh, sorry. Can you can I, uh, can I, oh, why is it so open? Uh, actually. Oh, why is it so open? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry.
So here we have mine, and then here we have the one that was brought. We see the design is pretty similar. What I've come to learn is these books were given out to sailors, and it was like you put the pictures in it, but here's the book. Uh, may I? Yeah, absolutely. So these are, yeah, I think these are probably souvenir photos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where did you guys get this book? So uh, it's one of our volunteers. His dad was in the Navy just prior to World War II and served over there and that's where he he purchased the album. I have the same photo here too, in the back of mine. Okay, and that's all, that's it. I, I think these are all original here. These look like it, yeah. Yeah, cause he, I mean, this yep. is, I forget which one of these guys he is, but like I see all these guys in this book again okay. and again. Yeah. Yeah, cause you wouldn't buy these kinds of photos. So did you want to compare them clo more closely? Sure. Okay. Do you think any of these in yours are original? I mean, I, I think it's possible. There's not, I didn't, I have not seen any like personal. Cause there's ones of mine that I think are definitely original. Yeah, for not, sure. Not the violent ones, but. Yeah, for sure you have originals. Okay, so yeah, mine, like I just, I can't tell. And unfortunately I'm being rushed in this process. Uh, like this is probably a souvenir. This is probably one, this, these two, I'm not a hundred percent. I mean, I would, I would think probably, but I just don't know. Cause like the quality here is just way lower. Like I can obviously tell that that's a souvenir just cause there's no color. Like it looks like a copy of a copy of a copy. Yeah, I have this exact same picture. Where is yours? Uh, one more. The yeah, right here. Too. Yeah, I think it's, it's the same photo. I mean, it's the same size and everything, the same souvenir. Right. It's just this book has not been opened and this one's probably been mm -hmm. looked at a lot more. So the quality is a lot better. I saw this one in here too. So this is, I mean, this is what threw me. I saw the word Nan King a few times in here. Mm -hmm. Oh shit. Yeah. God. So they're a little different. Yeah, but how many people has that done to? That's the one that bothered me the most. Me too, yeah. So like, in, if if you had to render an opinion, what would you say maybe half are real in my book and, and half are, are a souvenir? Yeah, half, I think your photos that he took of his shipmates are real. Mm -hmm. And the training I, I and don't, that. I'm not an expert enough to be able to say whether the actual um, civilian photos are. Right. Well, I mean, the other fact is too, is every photo would have to be taken out and examined yeah. and it would yeah. take a lot of time. Yeah. And I mean, definitely time is given, not what I have now. Yeah. I mean, given that we have the same photos, definitely, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of yours are souvenir. But it, it beckons the question, how many more of these books are out there? Mm -hmm. Who, what photos are, are in these other books? Uh, what hasn't been seen? Because I'm sure there's many more out there. Mm -hmm. Well, I really appreciate you guys Absolutely. going by and looking at it and letting me look at yours too. So it has been 17 days since I posted the video. I feel like I have aged 10 years in the past two weeks. I need to see a therapist when this is done. Uh, I have sustained incredible mental damage. There's something massively wrong with me. I am now trying to just get my mojo back and be myself again. So I haven't, here's where I am now. I haven't, I have, still haven't given the fucking thing up yet. And Jesus Christ, I just want to get rid of this thing now. Cause I'm worried, the biggest thing I'm worried about now is it's gonna get stolen before I can give it, before I can donate it. And then it's gonna be like, well, did, did he stage it? Did he make the whole thing up? Cause where was it? Did he even have it? Luckily I made digital copies, but I just want to heal now and go back to being myself and and take a vacation. But the other fact is too, is because this has cost me so much money, I have to work really hard now when this is done because to fix the financial damage that this has cost me. Because I, now I'm in a really bad spot financially. Uh, I went from being really in a good spot at the start of this month. We came out of having the best month ever, August, in August. And now like I, I'm, I'm having money problems right now because um, I haven't been working hard because this has just sucked all the energy out of me. All right, it is the end of the day, or like my store is closing soon on November 10th. Check me a minute. So it's been 71 days since the video came out and I just got the agreement from China. Now, this has been what has been taking so long is the lawyer has been helping me, basically hasn't been doing anything and like I have not been able to communicate to him how much of a fire I have under my ass about this because he just like seemed to think it was just like, oh, it's fine. And it's like, no, it's not fine. Like that. So between that and the person I was in contact with the consulate was being like kind of difficult. And then they gave me a contract, but they wanted all the rights to everything, including the digital copy, which like I already spent a thousand dollars on this book and I had to fucking deal with shutting my store down for a month. And I spent another 
I don't want to say how much, almost a thousand getting it digitally backed up. So I'm going to light that on fire. Like, this is a charitable opportunity. So luckily, they said it's okay. I can keep the digital rights. So I'm happy with this agreement. I'm just happy to move on. I really think this is the right thing to do. And it won't. But hopefully to some, it, it at least sheds light on what I did and, and that I'm just trying to do the best thing possible. And this is what I thought the best thing possible was, was to give it to them. It's their history. And frankly, this whole thing is so much bigger than me, period. Like I, I am just one person in the middle of some really complicated, deep, dark uh, history. And it's not a great idea to jump between two Titanic ice shelves as they're moving. T take it from me. All right, China, I really hope you guys never forget this. It's November 16th, it's been two and a half months since this video came out and I finally have a solution. In just under an hour, I am meeting with representatives from the Chinese government and I am donating them the album. I'm going to read them a letter and then I guess they have something for me, some kind of letters, I don't know, we'll see. So I'm a little nervous, let me show you guys what I got them. It's a like fancy presentation box. I have, like I said, a letter, I'm gonna be reading them. Uh, and then I brought some gloves in case they want to check it out. So let's call an Uber and head to my attorney's. I'm a little nervous. What can you do? God, last time I was here, well, I'm wearing different attire. Last time I was here, I was in a bulletproof vest with a handgun. They both looked at me like, good God, what did we sign up with? Okay. So once again, witnessed by my attorney. Okay, okay, so uh, sh shake your hands and uh, stand up. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank my, you. Very much. My, my pleasure. pleasure. My pleasure. And my pleasure as well. Nice to meet you. Thank you. All right, I have a letter I would like to read you guys. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Dear representatives, Mr. Zhu, Mr. Chen, and people of China. Hengao Xi Zhen Dao Ni. Wu Di Ming Tu Xi Evan Kao. I am a precious metal business owner in Minnesota, and I have been using social media for a few years to educate people about my industry and diversify my business. Thanks to platforms like TikTok, I have expanded into other arenas such as antiques, collectibles, and historical artifacts. One of my strategies involves having TikTok followers mail me their items for sale. I make videos about the value and intrigue of these items, and I send an offer to purchase these for profit. My videos are popular, and as you might imagine, I have had all sorts of items advertised, especially things from World War II. So when a customer contacted me in August and said they had a book of photos from the late 1930s, it drew my attention. I blindly asked the customer to send it without any further inquiries. They mailed me the photo album, and when I received it, I was stricken by the quality. Not of the violence at first, the entry images were rich with life before the war. However, as I kept turning the pages, the context grew savage. The emotion was overwhelming. I saw the word Nanking written a few times, and knowing what I did about the Pacific Holocaust, I suddenly found myself in a quagmire. The photo album belonged to a customer who sent it to me for financial compensation, and when I said yes, I did not realize what I was accepting. From an economic perspective, the photo album might have monetary value beyond my means of purchase. From an ethical standpoint, I knew it belonged in a museum, not a private collection. However, despite possessing a large audience on TikTok, I had never successfully garnered the attention of a professional in this arena. I thought social media would make an excellent tool to get the book in the right hands, but the context of what I was dealing with still left me at a crossroads. It took a few days for me to arrive at my decision, but on Wednesday, August 31st, I made the TikTok video that went so viral. I won't bore you with the behind the scenes narrations of the app crashing over and over, the emotion of the violent images working me up for a few days, or the frustrations of my busy business day. All that matters is within an hour of me posting the video, it spread globally, and immediately, allegations of a hoax emerged. I began receiving threats against my life and my business, but above all else, I recognized my actions inadvertently served a larger purpose. The video reignited a conversation about the horrors of World War II, 
and in the days after posting the video, I was shocked, glancing at the comments at the sheer volume of people who had no idea. The Chinese individuals stopping by my store echoed how important this education was. What stood out to me so much about these Chinese visitors was their age. Most were younger than me, and the wounds of a decades-old tragedy were still raw in their eyes. It moved me countless times, as did their encouragement and their kindness. This has been a long and challenging process, only further complicated by the false negative narratives invented about my intentions. The simple fact is, gentlemen, I received a piece of history on August 29th, 2022. It left me in the worst ethical dilemma of my professional career, and I took to social media to get it in the right hands. Indeed, I made some mistakes. It took time to get a professional opinion. The album contains several hundred photos, and I came to learn that although the few dozen violent photos that disturb me so much are likely high-quality souvenirs, most of the images overall are genuine. I decided the best thing to do was to pay the customer for the album and donate it to China myself. Although the photographer, Leslie G. Allen Jr., was an American serviceman and hero, his documentation takes place extensively in China, and that is where this artifact belongs. The, through social media, it has become a symbol of education, and its contents, I think, are of great historical significance to Chinese academics. So with that, I am privileged and honored to donate this album in the name of peace, harmony, and friendship. Thank you. The representatives from China just left. Um, I, I was very selective about filming. This is, you know, just such a sensitive, delicate, and like I wanted to be respectful. I want to stick a camera in their face. They flew from Chicago. They're, they just took it. You know, I read them a letter and shook hands and we did photos. They gave me some gifts. I'll show you in a minute. They're flying right back. I like, gosh, you guys came all this way. It means a lot, but so they, I'll show you guys here. This is, um, they gave me a new copy of the contract, but they gave me a letter, and I'll read it to you. From the Consulate General of the People's Republic of China in Chicago, dear Mr. Evan Kale, I would like to express my sincere gratitude for your donation of the photo album World War II to the Consulate General of the People's Republic of China in Chicago. The war crimes against the Chinese people committed by the Japanese troops during the Japanese aggression of China in the 1930s and 40s were among the darkest pages in human history. History serves as a mirror for the people today, and your donation certainly helps inspire everyone with a kind heart to safeguard peace. Once again, thank you for your contribution. The Consulate General will continue to work with our friends in the U.S. to further enhance the cultural links and friendship between the people of China and the U.S. Best wishes, Cao Jian, Consulate General, Consul General of the People's Republic of China in Chicago. I am going to treasure this letter forever, you guys. But not only that, I, and, and I, didn't, I didn't ask for this. They just did this. They gave me a gift, too. From the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, the People's Republic in China, they gave me this... I don't know what you guys are saying because of the car artist and the, and the crap I buy from him, but this is stunning, beautiful. This presentation porcelain piece, which I mean, I'm never going to use it. I don't cook A and B. It's just too pretty, but this just took my breath away. This is so kind. All right, I gotta go back to the shop and I have some closing remarks I'd like to say. So here we are now at the end of this two and a half months later, and there's a lot I want to say. What's difficult about this is I've wanted to say this now for months, and basically I've rehearsed this in my head and said this to myself in my head so many times that I'm exhausted. I've exhausted myself from talking about it, and I haven't even said a word about it. I, as you all know, have not been able to talk about this at all. Uh, you've heard a lot of allegations, you've heard a lot of things about me, you've heard a lot of things about this, but the one person you haven't heard from in all this, throughout all this, for the most part, minus the New Yorker article and, and a few early interviews, is from me and my perspective and what happened. So I'd like to conclude this by talking about the whole thing start to finish, because I can finally, finally talk about it. First off, before I get into this, if you're wondering why I have not been able to talk about it, I had to get a lawyer in all of this. I've said it before, but, and as we all saw, I met at the lawyer's office, but this got so out of control 
and so scary so fast. There were some really extreme words that were being tossed around when I met with the lawyer and he told me to shut the fuck up. Some of these words were destabilizing an entire region, starting a nuclear war, treason. That latter one was a real stretch. I mean, I, I wasn't, I didn't do anything treasonous, but it was a word that was thrown around and that's a very, very, very scary word, especially for somebody who's not a fucking traitor. That one, I mean, Jesus Christ, that scared the shit out of me. Let's start in, in mid-August. I received an email from a customer. As you all know, I have a remote buy program. You mail me stuff, I'll make a video about going through it, I'll sell it. I get all kinds of stuff advertised to me. I'm not just some, and this is another thing that frustrates me about this, I'm not just a boob that came out of nowhere. I had almost a quarter million followers before this happened. My entire business revolves around social media. If you don't know my story, how I started working for somebody else and created social media for it, for a business I was working for and they didn't understand it. So I took that and opened up my own store and have ridden success of social media with my store to elevate myself out of poverty and get myself here. Like I said, one of the things I have here is you mail me stuff and make a video going through it. It's a very popular program. Customer reached out to me, said they have a book of photos from World War II, and the book is kind of disturbing. Now, I see things from World War II all the time, and the whole war was disturbing. I didn't really think much of it. So I said, okay, just go ahead and send it to me. And he mailed it to me, and I got it uh, the last Monday in August. And I had, to be honest, forgotten that I had accepted it because I get so much stuff sent to me you know, it all kind of blurs together. So FedEx comes in, what's this? And I had a family friend over here and I opened it up and it was the book and you know, right away, just looking at the book, I was like, whoa. So I started flipping it open and the first few pictures are breathtaking. It's, it's like straight out of National Geographic, but then abruptly, a few pages in, it just turns to sheer carnage. And well, on TikTok, I said I screamed. I screamed, holy shit, oh fuck, oh God, oh fuck. I'm looking at these photos with a family friend and he doesn't even make it all the way through the carnage. He just said like, very disturbed and he left. So I didn't even make it through the whole book because it these pictures are bad. I shut the book, I put it in the back, I went home and I went running that night and I had a little bit of a crisis of, what do I do? Despite having a quarter million followers or so at the time before this video went so viral, again, I've had all kinds of crazy stuff advertised to me. I have had negatives from the Holocaust that I know nobody's ever seen. I can't traffic in something like that. I'm not. That's not something I wanna buy or sell. It belongs in a museum. And every single time I've ever reached out to a museum, and there have been many times, I never get a response. No, my phone calls don't get returned. My emails don't get returned with, with all these followers. I can't get a museum to take me seriously. I can't get their attention ever. So first day goes by, it's Tuesday. And the person who sent me the book messaged me and said, did you get it? It shows it was delivered. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. Second night goes by. And again, I'm still having a crisis on what to do. And these pictures are bothering me. And I'm not gonna pull, cause we'll get to this in a minute. Nobody wants their name attached to this thing in any way, shape or form. Went to bed, came to work on Wednesday. And again, I got another message from this guy like, okay, so you have my property. What are we gonna do with it here? So I thought to myself, okay, I can't buy this. I don't know what this is worth. I saw the word Nanking in the book cause it's in there a few times in the violent photos. And I thought, oh my gosh, this, these might be photos of the Nanking massacre. And might over the course of two days, turning this all in my head became probably is. So I'm here on Wednesday. And I go, I pick up lunch for my employee and I were eating. Ironically, we, we got Chinese food. And we're talking about the book and my employee says, so what's what's this Nanking massacre? And here's the thing that just boggles me. Nobody knows about it in the United States or very, very, very few people do. It is not taught the same way that the German Holocaust is taught and it is a Pacific Holocaust. You can't tangibly measure evil. It's every bit, if not as worse, is bad. So I explained what it was to him and he just was like, Jesus Christ. And it's like, yeah, it's not only one of the worst events of human history, it was a cover. It was covered up. There's very little photographic evidence of it. And what we have here is what I'm now thinking it is. Like I, holy shit, I don't know what. This, so, I started trying to make a TikTok, and the idea of the TikTok was I'm gonna make something that catches attention because I have never been able to capture any museum's attention ever. And as I was making the video, I got more and more worked up. The app kept crashing. I kept getting all the way to the end and the app would crash and I'd have to reshoot the whole thing. It took four or five hours. What you saw, the video I put out was maybe like the fifth time I'd shot it. And I got more and more and more worked up each time. And uh, my employee went home at five. I didn't put the thing out till seven. The fourth version of it, I honestly started to cry because I was getting so worked up about it. And it, it the fourth one, I made it all the way to the end, but it was, it was just all over the place with emotion. So I deleted that and then I did the one that you all saw and I released it and I went home and I met up with some friends. I didn't look at my phone until later that night. 
By the time I looked at my phone again, it had com completely, completely run away from me. The next day I came in here and had just like the, the, one of the craziest days of my life. It, at first was overwhelming support and just so much kindness. And I have suddenly Chinese people stopping by my store, like lining up to like hug me and cry and give me flowers. And this goes on into Friday. And then suddenly my phone's ringing off the hook and I have every journalist in America trying to call me and in China. But then toward the end of the first day into the second day, this narrative starts that it's a big hoax and that I'm using a war crime to get famous. And it, it, all these allegations start about me. Then of course we have the armchair historian army on Twitter picking me apart and feeding fire to this narrative and just turning it into something very negative and hateful. And suddenly I'm getting threats against my life. I'm getting threats against my business. Uh, my mom calls me in tears after she sees on Sunday, a certain washed up comedian who again shall remain nameless cause he's human garbage made a video with accusations about me that were so inflammatory. My mom called me in tears and wanted me to get police protection. I was wearing a bulletproof vest for weeks. Not only that, uh, I'm pretty sure the FBI was surveilling me. There was a service van outside here for a week. Guy standing, working on the telephone pole with a clipboard. I, um, I almost went out and was like, you guys just come inside, I'd feel more safe. I had an agent with someone, I don't know who, this creepy camera footage. That scared the shit, I had to close my store down after that. That guy was trying to hack into my Wi-Fi, and I don't know who he was with, and it was so sketchy. He apparently was camped out here for over an hour, like rocking in his car. He had out of state plates and just was acting so sketchy. Like I knew something was going on there. And he just, as soon as I asked him to leave, he stood outside my store, took a bunch of pictures. My jewelry person went out and took a picture of his license plate and he just boom, took off. And I called the police and filed the report and they didn't really A, care or B, understand. And it was just like, it was really, really, really scary. Here's the other thing that happened after the narrative shifted so negatively. I went from having suddenly every museum willing to help me and I had a bunch of museum contacts to by Monday, again, this, this I staged the whole thing had taken off and become so prevalent on social media that everyone ghosted me. I had a few people lined up here in Minnesota. I'm not gonna say what organizations they're affiliated with because I don't want to throw them under the bus even though I'm really mad they chose to do this. It completely ghosted me and I had gone on social media and said, you know, I'm gonna have findings this coming week, you know, and then I'm gonna share them. And then just everyone fell off the face of the earth and suddenly I had nobody to check it out. So what did end up happening, I finally did get a handful of academics and a few people involved with museums to give me their opinions. And when I say these broad terms like that, it's because nobody even still, despite the fact they believe that I did not stage this, wants to put their name on it. No one. I had somebody at Yale look at it very high up in the historical department there. I can't say who, because he literally said, you can't, you can't put my name on this. I gave him permission to use the photos in the book in a, a paper he's writing, or he's working on some kind of a book. He's working on something, and he was really impressed with not the violent photos, but the other ones. And so I'm like, yeah, you know, go ahead, use them. So I got his opinion. Um, I got a, well, again, a museum gave me an opinion, but I don't want to say who. Here are the findings. I made a mistake. The violent photos are souvenir photos. They're not from Nanking. They're from Shanghai, most likely. My mistake was seeing the word Nanking and not realizing that Nanking Road was in Shanghai. That was a mistake on my part. There are things I could have done, indeed. I could have Google searched the images more carefully. Um, I just, I, in my defense, I, just, I got so worked up about this and, and I had a fire under my ass from this customer. He wanted to know what to do and I didn't know what to do. And again, I thought, and I still think, and obviously China agrees with me, it belongs in a museum. So the findings are, the violent photos are likely souvenirs. There were one or two that were questionable. Really quickly, where has the book been? I don't wanna say in case I ever have to deal with anything this secure or high profile again, but I was having people I know basically handed off in parking lots, no cell phones, like a drug deal. And this was da, 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 like some straight up spy level shit because I was so afraid that this thing was gonna get stolen. And then it's like, well, he really did fake it. So yeah, just keeping it protected for two and a half months was was one of the most difficult things about this and keeping my, well, I don't wanna say who was keeping it safe, but thank you, Jesus Christ, thank you. So without looking at it, you know, they, they couldn't render, but they said one or two are questionable. However, the quality of the souvenirs is top notch. They might be the highest quality souvenir photos out there because most, the, most of these souvenir photos are really beat up. That said, the book has hundreds of photos. The vast majority of these photos are real. The fact is, Leslie G. Allen Jr., the man who took those photos, was an excellent photographer and he had a great camera. And from the perspective of history, we are fortunate that he was there and was able to assemble this book. I mean, like I said, there's souvenir photos, but it doesn't matter. The historical importance is still there. 
We have an American service person's perspective at one of the most pivotal points in human history, one of the most important places to be. And if you match up the ship that he was docked on with where he's taking the photos, it all lines up. So yes, he has a bunch of souvenir photos, but he has assembled a hell of a book. And the fact is, you guys, there are more of these books out there. Um, I've had other people reach out to me. It is so historically important. I can't begin to stress this enough. Not only that, I've accidentally educated millions of people about the Pacific Holocaust. So before I segue into why I gave it to China and let's just finish the how with these accusations that I staged it. Okay, first up, you guys, if I had staged this, I would have kept posting about it. I would probably have 20 million followers on TikTok. I would have made so, I could have made so much money off of this deal. I lost money. Not only did I pay $1,000 for the book and why did I pay a thousand for the book? Well, once I finally had an opinion about the photos, it became time for Who's gonna front the bill? I was just being crucified to do something and the act of me going and assessing a dollar amount to this thing when it's just so messy and there's so much raw emotion and it's just such an ugly subject matter. The whole thing is blood money at that point. And so I thought, you know what? I'm gonna just pay the bill. I'm gonna just fucking swallow this whole thing myself and I'm gonna just give it to China because it's the best the best possible outcome I think I can have for this. I called the guy up, I said, look, we can play auction on this, I can try and fetch the highest bidder because once it became apparent that I didn't think I could afford it, he was gonna give me 10%. But then once it became apparent that this whole thing was so messy, I just was like, I'm gonna just pay for it. So I said, look, I'll give you a thousand dollars for it, let's put this whole thing to bed. He said, fine. So I paid him, I own it. Now, I just wanna quickly say, I didn't steal it. The amount of people that don't seem to understand what a consignment is. He mailed it to me to sell, couldn't buy it, offered to consign it, meaning I would sell it for him and take a cut. Ultimately, I ended up paying for it. So I just want to say before why I gave it to China, if I had staged it, I would have milked it for all it was worth. I wouldn't have bled money like this. I would be way richer. I would have way more followers than I have. It is such an erroneous, heinous allegation that has been attached to me on the simple fact that I'm a human and I made a mistake. Nothing baffling about that. You made a provocative video. Yes, because I am a social media influencer and my entire business revolves around social media and making a product that is viewed. I don't make videos to not get views. I accidentally assembled a perfect storm of words in a video. What I failed to realize was there's geopolitical gasoline all over the ground, and with some words, I threw a match. And by the time I turned around, there was a big fucking fire. So this is the best thing I could possibly think to do with it, is give it to China. Why give it to China? Because the one thing I come to learn after all of this is this is so important for Chinese history, for Chinese people. What I didn't realize is how many young people this war still affects. World War II affects me as well. I was raised by my grandma and my grandfather who fought in the Pacific. I don't know if it's true or not. My grandma told a lot of tall tales. Allegedly, she had a fiance that was killed in Pearl Harbor and she met my grandfather like right after the war. I'll tell you what is true. My grandpa got shell shock, epilepsy from the war and it ruined, ruined his life. So the subject of World War II, even for me, is raw and real. I spent a lot of time around my grandparents and I heard a lot about the Pacific theater and just, you know, being here in the States and having some opinions, shall we say. And so, you know, the war is still tangible to me. And I just didn't realize for young Chinese people how raw it still is for them. So what convinced me it needs to go to China is all these Chinese people showing up here begging me to send it to them and saying, you know, no matter what, even if all these photos are fake, you did a really good thing and we appreciate it. I wouldn't have that letter from the Chinese government if I had done a bad thing here. This book might have been an American service person's perspective, but it's his perspective in China. The book belongs in China. And on top of that, as the armies of woke white people cancel culture are screaming their heads off about me, wheeling out guillotines. The actual people who got genocided are saying thank you. I say this all the time, but really proof is in the pudding there. As far as the horrible event itself goes, the Nanking Massacre and me explaining it because this all started with me. I was gonna make a TikTok explaining what it was and trying to segue into the book. And instead the video that came out came out. At the end of this, you guys, I'm not the person to tell you about it. I made a mistake and I just don't think it's appropriate for me to sit here and summarize the whole event when I made an error. The guy who is the person to tell you about it is the Lions Led by Donkeys podcast. I think it's episode 204. He does a three-parter on Nan King. It is shocking. Just, and, and there's things in it that even I didn't know. I put a link in the video description. You guys can go check it out. I, you have to listen to the whole thing. But the fact is, I'm not the person to explain this because I made a mistake. And although I made a mistake, I don't regret what I did for a single second. If the conversation is genocide and you're being educated about it, then nothing is lost. I firmly, truly believe that at my core. And I'll say, if you still think that I'm this bastard who did a terrible thing at the end of this, 
I actually think that speaks negatively about your intelligence and your ability to conceptualize a bigger picture. There's an irony here. This book, although it does not contain any actual photos of Nanking or the massacre of Nanking, has become a symbol of education about Nanking. The book itself, as a symbol, has such historic value, not only, not just the photos that are in it, but the message that is conveyed across the world, educating people about the Pacific Holocaust. And if that's too much irony for you to swallow, keep in mind, my name's Pawn Man. I don't do pawn. I'm not a pawn shop, it's just a name. Now, as far as you guys being able to see the book, uh, here are the next steps. And I am sorry that I don't have this done already. Uh, the fact is, once again, because this has gotten so murky and there's so many awful accusations about me, I, I just, I can't get any museums to want to get on board with this. What I want to do, I don't want to just put this on the internet because there is an incredible opportunity to raise money for charity here. What I want to do, I own the digital rights. I signed a contract, as you all saw with China, they own the physical book, but they were kind enough to give me the digital rights. I own those forever. And it's my job now to distribute them and share them with the masses. But I don't want to just put it on the internet when I can give it to a museum and let them host it for 99 cents for a month and maybe we can raise six figures for a good cause. I just don't want to waste an opportunity like that. So what I'm going to do, there's a few museums I have at least, they've at least given me the time of day and I'm in contact with them. So we're seeing if any one of them wants to, wants to take it. And if they don't, what I'm going to do I'm gonna put it up here on YouTube. I'm gonna have it be an ad video. And then I'm gonna take all the money I get from the ads and I'm gonna donate it to, I don't know what yet. Maybe the Nanking Massacre Museum, maybe Victims of Genocide. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I'll do something where you guys, we can pool and pick where the money goes because we can raise a lot of money here. Simple as that. I don't want to do it that way because it's kind of sketchy. I will say I will be transparent with the analytics. I will show you guys all the money I get from them. I don't want, the bottom line is with this, you guys, I don't want any fucking money from this at all. And and I keep, I don't know how much I can stress this. And I think it's just, it, it is evident that I didn't do this on purpose to like exploit this. I, I am not wanting any money, I'm just losing money. And I don't care. It's education, that's why I'm here, it's why I make content. So by the end of this year, uh, one way or another, it's gonna be up for you, all of you guys to see. Uh, I'm giving it till mid-December for a museum to say okay, and if they don't, then I'm gonna just do the YouTube video. But again, I don't wanna do that. I just don't like that distribution format or that method of raising money. I'm also not comfortable with setting up my own website and taking money. I just, it's sketchy, and I can only imagine the allegations if I did that. Really quickly, you guys, I would like to share my human cost because this is my YouTube channel. This is my perspective, my chronicle. I don't want to make this about me. This isn't, this whole thing is so much bigger than me, but it's worth sharing what happened because I've never been through anything like this in my life. Uh, I was 175 pounds for three somewhere in there before this started. I'm just over 150. Uh, my lowest, I was in the high 140s. I was my lowest weight since high school. I was in eating for a couple weeks. Uh, there was a lot of drinking. There was some drug use because I just was not coping well. I had several panic attacks. I didn't leave my apartment for several weeks. I was wearing a bulletproof vest everywhere I went. I was, I was so paranoid. I was like, I was literally hiding. Like I didn't want to go out for weeks. But the hardest thing is watching all these people make shit up about you and you can't, you can't defend yourself. You can't say anything. You can't do anything. And your silence, people think that that is an indictment. And it's just, this was an experience like I never, ever, ever want to deal with again. I talked about this a few months ago in a YouTube video where I had to say a little something, but you know, I didn't say much. This is like a very special club being in this with the viral video that just gets posted all over the world and picked apart seven ways from Sunday. As soon as the photos are available for everyone to see, I will let everyone know right away. I'm, I'm going as fast as I can, but I just, ready to, to move on with my life and continue making content, educating people and just turning the page because this has been the, the craziest saga of my life by far. To cap this off, everybody who stood up for me, everybody in China, thank you guys.